Hi, I'm Milo Melodies. I'm here with Give Music Synth and Tech, and today I am going to be taught Bitwig. I am joined by the wonderful Pat Coupeau. Very happy to uh, teach you Bitwig. Uh, I, I love teaching everyone Bitwig, so this is great. Right, so the first thing probably anyone should do is set up their audio and MIDI preferences. So if you look at the top of the interface, you see the Bitwig logo right in the this center of the screen. Fella. Yep, right there. Yeah, yeah. Click on that, uh-huh. and you are in preferences now. Keyboard shortcut for that would be Command or Control, comma. Pretty much the same on most uh, applications now. Uh, so if you go to Settings, which is that second tab, you'll see Audio on the left-hand side. Bada bang. Yeah. And you can set up your uh, audio interface there, your input and output. Um, cool. Set up your sample rate, bit depth everywhere here. And then after setting that up, you can go to the controller. Your controller is on the left-hand side. Yeah. And here, uh, you already have it set up, but you, yeah, you have your Arturi. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> what um, can I say? But if you wanted to add a keyboard controller or any type of MIDI controller, you can add that here as well. There are some uh, scripts already built in, but um, you can actually uh, search for some user-created scripts uh, written by many, many talented people out in the Bitwig community and uh, use it's- them here. What do the scripts do? What scripts are good for is uh, custom mapping any controller that you have. So let's say you have an Ovation Launchpad that you uh, wanted to do a very specific thing for your needs. You can um, say what every every button, um, every mode on the uh, Launchpad will do. So you can customize everything. So audio and controllers are set up. Do I need to like make it see all the inputs for my interface? You know. Yes, um, you can. So right now you have as your input buses a stereo input. If you um, if you want, like on my interface right now, I have my stereo input uh, just in case. But I also have two uh, mono uh, setups. Yeah, okay. I am. Um, I currently, as a colossal show off, have an ARP twenty six hundred going into ah. <laughs> input two. So. Uh, <laughs> Apologies for that flex. Very um, good. But yeah, um, so if I click here, mm-hmm. mono, basically this is setting the, the quantity of available inputs. Absolutely. I've got a stereo pair in from one and two, and, and I've got a mono from two, which is where the ARP is. Something very cool, you can do double click where it says mono in, and you can rename that ah, to be yes. your ARP. Very nice. And then when you're looking at this on a different track, you want to make sure that it's the audio is coming from that synth, you can just select that name of the synth. Anything else I should do in this screen? Uh, maybe you want to go to packages just to see what you have uh, set up already. Um, Check my packages. You, uh, you have the essentials and extended already uh, loaded up. Perfect. Uh, but if you wanted some more, there are some artist, partner, and uh, other collections there. Um, and you might see some of the stuff from me in there if you uh, dig, oh. dig deep a little. <laughs> <laughs> some deep cuts. That's right. Um, um, I'm intrigued, but so these are like sounds and presets and like drum machine sounds and anything yeah, particular um, that you should be aware of. Pretty much the same in uh, in other DAWs. You can find um, drum machines, different presets for uh, all the different instruments that are in there, uh, and sampler instruments um, of different types of uh, sounds. Some, some electric keys, mm. which are my favorites. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. So what next? So what here next? we are in Bitwig. Uh, we are looking at, the, at two kind of views here. On the left-hand side, we have the launcher. If you're used to non-linear workflows uh, and from other DAWs, uh, this will be familiar to you. Go ahead and- This is very familiar. Yeah. There is a DAW, I think. <laughs> a, yeah, few, yeah. a few now. Yeah, yeah, that's um, true, actually, yes. And uh, so there's your, there's your launcher. On the right-hand side is the arranger. So the, the main workflow is to maybe start um, writing some ideas in the launcher. Um, yeah, and yeah. you can mix and match all of your ideas together. Then you can record them over or drag them over into the arranger uh, and so, arrange it out in a timeline. So the two kind of coexist. This is kind of a novel concept to me. They're both on the same screen. Both on the same. Um, if you hit tab, though, you can go over to the mix um, ah. mix page. And uh, it's pretty much the same as the launcher. You can see all of the clip slots there on these two tracks, one instrument track and one audio track. But this view called the mix, uh, mix panel can be set up in different ways. If you look on the bottom right-hand side of this, uh, this area to the right of the master track, uh, right I there. see there the you like go. dot. Yeah, yeah, okay. The third one down is, um, is going to be your levels ah, there. Yeah. So you could just use this page as your mixer. 
um, below that, below where those uh, those levels are, are little plus buttons for devices. So you can see all the devices on a track. So if you added um, any instrument, you would see it there. Any effect, you would see yeah. it there. So on this page, you could see maybe just the levels and the devices. Uh, and then at the bottom, there is the device view. Or the this like yep. this strip here. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So our goal today <laughs> is to try and write a, a track. Um, okay. Uh, a sketch. Let's call it a sketch. That's probably a bit safe, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, because anytime you use a new tool, whether it's a you know a DAW or um, or a plugin, I think you should try and make something with it and then export it. So I want to take you all the way from making your initial idea to getting it outside of your DAW. Uh, anytime I, I use a DAW, anytime I open it up, my intention is to export something, bounce something Amazing. out. Well, it's a very, very noble goal. Yeah, it's hard, <laughs> but it's, yeah, uh, it it's a good goal. So Okay, good. Um, I'll leave it to you. What do you want to make today? No pressure. Well, <laughs> let's. We, we can make like a beat and some some kind of electro okay. vibed thing. It tends to be my, my jam, All as right. they say. Let's go for it. Let's start with the drums. Yeah. All right. So let's go into this first instrument track. This is fine. If you scroll to the bottom to the device view at the bottom, there is a plus button. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We're looking for the drum machine. Now, here's one of the browsers. Um, you can go anytime you see a plus button, you're going to see one of these pop up. On the right hand side, though, there's your main browser for all, all devices. This thing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot more to it than just instruments, instruments and uh, effects, but we'll stick with those for now. So back to the pop-up browser that you just brought up. We're looking for the drum machine. Uh, you could either type that in. Literally, I type the word drum. Yep, and this is a Bitwig device. Now, before you do that, I yeah. think you're going to use something like this for you know many projects. There's a little star next to the name. Um, ah, so if I go... Yep. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's part of your favorites once you push that. Ah, and if you go to favorites, anything you star will be there. Okay. So without having to type it in, mm -hmm. it's still there. I use yeah, that a okay. lot. And you can make yeah. custom folders to uh, to store things in. Mm. Favorites is a go-to for me. So double okay. double click on drum machine. Yeah. And here it is. It um, yeah. It can hold up to 128 uh, instruments. Um, and we're going to use a couple types, or I, I want to encourage you to use a couple types here. And when you say instruments, it can, it is literally like instruments or sounds as well. Like it yeah. can be, yeah. If, okay. if you drop in an audio sample, it's going to load up an instrument called sampler and load okay. that sample into sampler. But you could also use any synth that you want. Um, inside <laughs> yeah. of there, you could add another drum machine inside of drum machine if you want. I've, <laughs> I've totally done that before. Uh, Diving into all the other instruments that you could store in here into this container called Drum Machine. Um, I just want to show you how to load up a preset if you wanted to. So yeah. next to the power button at the top uh, left, there's a folder. Click on that. And then you're, here are all the presets Ooh. for Drum Machine. Now, this is, this is uh, kind of in real time. As you load one of them up, you can play it right away. Even if uh, you already have a MIDI clip um, playing, you could hear it, the change in real time. So you can load up a new preset, hear how that sounds with the rest of your track. Oh, yeah, there's some. I mine see right some there. devilishly handsome oh, name wow. here. Okay, there it <laughs> is. <laughs> We're not going to go there though. There's some there's really some better ones. Oh, um, so for, I mean, bad. for for something like a lecture, I would use uh, okay. maybe like an 808. Yeah, um, that that actually makes sense. Um, so how would I then preview these? Do I do click one? Click or? on it once. Yeah, it'll load. Maybe oh, there we go. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's loading a load of thirty-two different um, samples there, and you see a lot more there than just the the standard drum machine. There is something called macros there, which are part of the modulators. Right. All right, and we can we'll get into that a little bit and more. This is like this is like blowing my mind slightly because it really is like a whole. Yeah. That looks like an 808. It, I, does. well, it doesn't look like an 808, but it's late. You know, there are the controls. The layout, yeah. This is, yeah, interesting. Okay, well, let's, cool. Before you commit, let's hear how it sounds. Um, any of those play buttons, like uh, BD, scroll over to the right a little bit. You'll see yep. the pads here. Aha. And then, yeah, there we go. And I can, it's the whole idea. I can click here and mm -hmm. just fire up another one. And it's going to load up the next one 
as you can see, there's a lot going on, so it might take a second. Some of them yeah, are yeah. smaller. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's really nice. Can I play the keyboard and then... Press, uh, press OK. <laughs> now, the reason, the reason you were able to use your keyboard is because the track is armed. Just uh, in case someone didn't right. know where that was on this track, you see the red arm button right there. Yeah. You want to make a clip? What, uh, what tempo would you prefer to work at for uh, some electro? Mm, 134. Go for it. Maybe. Uh, so I'm, I mean, it's just naturally found where that was, but yeah. it was right in the last. But up here, as you see, you've got time signatures mm -hmm. and other mystical runes. Right. But that seems fairly straightforward. And that, that's a big thing when you're going from one DAW to another, or just at least trying out another DAW, is uh, search for those things that you're familiar with. Okay, where's where's the tempo? Where's the BPM? How do I tap in the tempo? Not super uh, in your face in Bitwig. If you hold down, I believe it's Command or Control, and then press the, uh, the play button. Oh, yeah, it is Control. Yeah, right. Yeah, that isn't obvious at all. I'm glad you told me that. <laughs> It actually does say at the bottom, doesn't it? I can. Yes. I don't want to move my mouse away, but right here at the bottom of the screen, it says playing click, yes. right click. Right, so that's the so status bar at the bottom. Uh, anything yeah. you hover over, Down here. Um, it'll tell you what you're hovering over. Oh, that, that is actually super useful. There's, there, uh, It goes another level up, I'll get into it, the, the show help <laughs> view in uh, built into Bitwig that will blow your mind. Okay, so we've browsed for instrument, we found an 808, and we've loaded it up. Yep. How, how do we actually make a beat? So double click on uh, that empty clip slot where you are right there. All right, so yeah. now we've created a clip. Um, something brand new in uh, the latest uh, updates to Bitwig Studio. You can change the color palette if uh, this wasn't jiving with you. Um, see the little arrow next to the color palette, right? This that thing. one, yeah. There are some oh. more colors in. You can also import an image and uh, from an image. Yep. And I've been nice. making some custom ones myself in Photoshop. This is just a lot of fun. Which one did you say? I like, like this one. This one. I can't Madeira. pronounce the name of it. Madeira. Madeira. Yeah. Is it Madeira? That's like a sort of liqueur, isn't it? Or, yeah. Oh. And a cake. It's a type of cake. <laughs> I did not know which that. Is I'm learning too good, today. Always a good thing. Um, <laughs> so okay, let's so. Uh, let's double click on that clip, and then we're inside of the detail view at the bottom. Oh, yeah. And you'll see um, all of the uh, the instruments that are already loaded up. Above the names of all those uh, instruments, do you see the little keyboard and the little drum pad icons? I do. I do. Yeah. So, so two different ways of looking at the, uh, the editor here. Um, if it's just the keys, uh, maybe that's better when you're writing melodic parts or you know, so chord progression. But when you load up a drum machine, that pad version... Uh, is probably better because you can see the names of everything clearly. Yeah, that's really good. Yep. All right, so this is a standard um, kind of MIDI note editor. If you want to, if you want to type something in, um, sequence it in, or if you want to record something in, whichever one is more comfortable for you. Well, I'd like maybe program in by okay. hand, All right. as in like draw it with a pen. Okay. So um, the you see the arrow next to that pad icon that we just talked about? Yeah. Click on that, and you'll see five different options there. The pen tool is probably what you're going for. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, uh, if you hit the number three, you can go there right away. So you can I see. click one through five and one, switch two, between three. them. So I'm hitting, yeah, one, two, three on my. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, there you go. And then to play space bar, and then hit the play here, or? Uh, you don't have to hit spacebar. If you just press play on this clip or uh, launch this clip, it'll pl start the transport as well. Nice. <laughs> nice. So I'm immediately starting to like wonder, how do I get velocities? How do I adjust velocities? So at the bottom, um, there's a little speaker icon that's already lit up orange. Next to that is the velocity editor. So not just velocity, uh, you can edit chance here as well, which is very, mm -hmm. very cool. This is very interesting to me. So mm -hmm. Wait, chance is the probability that a note is going to occur. Exactly. So right now they're all at zero, or 100, um, and yep. you can change that as, if you wanted to. So maybe on some hi-hats. So how would I then uh, like drag my mouse and do like, uh, you know, 16th, and like fill this up and then create alternate velocities? Right, so if you click and just drag across, you're going to get one long MIDI note. But if yeah. you hold down Option when you do that, 
option. And drag across. Yeah. You're going to get it on every 16th note. Now, at the bottom right-hand corner, you're going to see 1 over 16. Yeah. Here you can change the um, the resolution yeah. of the grid. Also, um, comma and period will make it larger or smaller. Yes, they do. Look at that. Yeah. I don't know about those like super trilling. <laughs> Maybe this will be. Oh, that's a bit footwork. <laughs> yeah. A bit too quick. Um, Maybe that might be cool, and I'll show you something with the new operators in Vivek Studio okay. to do something like that. But let's maybe go for. Uh, oh, we're just going to go for a, like garden variety sixteenths as we Perfect. our initial like intention. What that was it, wasn't it? So, all right, I'm drawing those in. Yes, that absolutely is the nice. kind of thing I want. <laughs> let's try and put one of those faster trills on um, on. I don't know somewhere in the fourth beat. Maybe yeah. maybe that that last uh, last sixteenth note there. Yeah, yeah. So let's uh, let's go over to the inspector. Haven't brought up the inspector yet. We did a little bit when talking about the colors and uh, being able to change that. This is being nice. Yeah, that's it. That's the yeah. inspector on the left. Um, you can hide and show that with the eye in the very bottom left. There. This little thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I think they more real estate on the screen. But whatever you have selected, uh, you're going to see more properties to to change and oh, alter. I see, like literally, like. Mm -hmm. well, even if it's a single note, for yep. example. Yeah, okay. So um, there are different types of operators. The first one is chance, and you can you can change that yourself in the note expressions we saw below, where the That's velocity is. Thing. Operators sounds yep. very exciting. That's yes. a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah, okay. The one below that, though, um, is a repeat. So, and it will, uh, any, by the way, if you want to just reset something, just double-click it. It'll put it back in uh, the I can oh, see what's happening. I would here. just this play with delightful. it. Just play with it. See what it, yeah, see yeah, what it yeah. does. Okay. I see what it's doing. And what's really nice about it is that you can visually see what's going on in the interface. Not just, uh, you know, if you brought that number up and the interface didn't change on that one note, you'd have to wait and see, but you could see that it's going to happen. It's like really clear what's going Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. It's like clear what's happening. And if I, let's just make this ridiculous ah. so that we can really I mean that's what we want to do right yeah of course ah I kind of like it there's your bouncing ball <laughs> right wait a second that's some hold, instant hold instant the phone <laughs> this is how Apex did it there you go <laughs> he had a, a like an alpha copy of you Bit said Wicked. it not me in like, <laughs> yeah, that is crackers. I love it. Look what that's doing. Now, that one... would just be so difficult to do. Uh, I mean, right? I don't know without like getting on like right into the grid. That's one of the I mean? things I love about Bitwig. It's it's made by you know musicians, producers that uh, really have looked at the techniques that people have used and say, okay, how can we make that a little bit easier or a lot <laughs> easier to do? Yeah. Here is case in point. Now, if you want to take this one step further, click on the velocity uh, expression lane. So is that, that is the one here. Yeah. That one yeah, there. Yeah. Now um, you have two uh, notes there. Both of them are being re-triggered or repeated. Uh, you can create um, some kind of uh, velocity ramp up and down. Mm -hmm. So it's um, you can see the note head kind of velocities, but there's another lane there kind of in the this background. Grayed out one, yeah. Right. So um, take that, f go to the uh, 1.1 right at the beginning and drag that down. And then you can see that there's an end as well. Okay, so indeed. then bring that one up. And you can create oh. a ramp. Yes. Now, you, when you do this, you have to make sure that your instrument is set up for velocity. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, it might not be right now, but uh, we can we can adjust that. We can adjust it now if you'd like to, or we yeah, can maybe. Uh, let's just it. hear. What do we do to apply velocity to this? So let's go find the closed hi hat or whichever hi hat you're using. It's this little. Oh, okay. Chestnut. Okay, let's. Double click on that. Yeah. And we might have to scroll over a bit. Oh, yeah. So there's an arpeggiator, and then there's, um, which is turned off. It might be turned on by default when you first load this, but uh, you don't need to turn that on. Next okay. to it is the actual instrument. Click on chain, chain, and then you can see inside of this, which is a sampler. Oh. All right. So on the 
right hand side you see note release effects uh a panning knob and then below that is um that knob right there is for velocity sensitivity so bring that up oh yeah all the way i see and you adjust that to taste so this is like the amount by which it respects velocity exactly you know and applies velocity to its own volume Mm -hmm. okay so if it's off then it's like it's just you know everything will be just going to be at full volume all the whole time you can dial in the amount by which it respects that Mm -hmm. so now it actually acts on it okay do we can we duplicate this and sort of do one variation so we've got like a did you want to do it in this one clip or create a new clip? I would probably do it in this one clip. And okay. Just create a, a clip that has more length to it and therefore more variation. We can hear it for longer without getting... So um, select all of the notes, just a Command A. Yeah. Uh, Command D will be to duplicate this. Yeah, look, it's just appeared here. Uh-huh. And you will have to adjust the loop length. Okay, so there's. I see it here. This is very familiar to me, but yeah. there's a, a sort of um, loop brace that's going right. to control the length. Mm-hmm. Look how I like how kind of like graphy it looks. Yeah. There's something quite pleasing <laughs> about the aesthetic. It's got a sort of battleship graph vibe. Um, so there are some other ways to look at this uh, view. Right click, and you you'll see um, pitch class at the bottom. Ah. Every oh. every note, if you went back to the more keyboard view of the um, of this the editor, thing. every yeah. note, every pitch class will will have a different color. So each color, each note has a distinct color. So mm-hmm. then it just helps you see that as a snare, right? Without having to follow your eye across the snare. If you wanted to go to crazy town, <laughs> every note could be on a different MIDI channel. Yeah, uh, and you would you could instead of doing pitch class, you could see the different MIDI channel of every note as a different color. You can make like notes a different MIDI channel. Yeah, we won't go there. That's too far for today. (laughs) Okay, yeah, that is Uh, that is some like next level stuff. Um, But it's not too far. It's very very accessible in this program. Yeah. Nice, good variation. Yeah, thank you, thank you. That's good. Yeah, spent a lot of time on that. Uh, So so what's next? Uh, Let's add some bass. Yeah. Or should we add some effects or do we Oh I mean, yeah. I don't, well, I don't want to like mess with your like the flow here. But no, like, no. It's kind of I for flow whatever whatever comes of, up. Let's go to the very very end of this chain, the last pl- uh, plus button that you see on so the right. We've gone all the way to the right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then there's this here. There's that and you you'll see another pop-up browser. Ping. And yep. it's uh it's it knows where it is. It knows it's at the end of the chain. Um so it's brought up the audio effects. So okay. there, there are some right. different ones. Uh, we see distortion and distortion slash dynamics, or there's also destruction. Um, but let's uh, let's stick with some some uh, some Bitwig ones. If you click on the Bitwig logo in the next column to the left, this one, yeah, this it's, is just, it's just filtering filter to, yeah. to like the built-in Bitwig stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay, because obviously I've got yeah I've got my like built-in plugins. One okay. that I've really liked lately is Saturator. Mm-hmm. This um, thing. Mm-hmm. So double click, I guess. Double click. Yeah. And uh, okay. press play. Oh, yeah. Nice. So we talked a little bit before about, um, before this sort of call about, actually, you know, it was in that, um, I watched a, a tutorial that you gave and you talked about the fact that when you, boot up a lot of the bitwig effects they look ah. very simplistic and like you'd think well there's this is missing this feature it's not here there's like i need a thing here i would right. normally have that and what you said in the in the talk was kind of the whole philosophy of bitwig is about you dialing in the features that you need on a mm-hmm. kind of um like you know so you can everything is kept simple so that in a modular fashion you can basically add in the extra functionality you need right you can add a lot to these effects um, with uh, with different remote controls, which I'll show you right now. If you uh, go to the uh, header of Saturator. To here, yeah. Yep. And scroll down a little bit uh, right there, the eight little, there you go. These are the remote controls. So the most important um, parameters uh, of Saturator or any device will automatically show up here. 
if you click on the wrench of it at the top, yeah, you can create your own mappings here, your own preset pages. Um, uh, maybe you want to perform with, uh, with with Saturator on one of your, your chains. Um, you can say, I want it to be this way exactly. That would be your preset page that you could save. And every time you load it up, that would be there for you. So it's very customizable. We'll see in some other effects, we'll get into some reverb and delay where you can actually mm. uh, really further add more <laughs> to these, what look like you know very vanilla, very plain uh, effects. You'll see that you can do a lot with them. But let's stick with this. Uh, maybe, maybe go for the preset uh, to start. Mm -hmm. How do um, I get different presets? Is so it... click on the folder again. This thing? Yeah. yeah. And um, what I love, uh, anytime I see a company do this, when they mention the sound designer uh, or preset designer, mm. um, they, uh, I just appreciate that. Because yeah. <laughs> since I'm, I'm in some companies' uh, yeah. libraries, I really just appreciate that. So um, you might find a, um, a sound designer that you like or a preset designer that you like. And anytime you open up a new device, maybe go for, for one of theirs or, mm. uh, or try someone new. Um, I like uh, I like Guinness's um, presets. They're kind of the the, the main ones. Um, maybe saturation one. So then, if we hit play, are we hearing? Yeah, oh, yeah. There you go. And if you just wanted to lessen this a little bit, just turn the drive down. So like this. Oh, I quite like that. There you go. Yeah, nice. All right. Uh, how about some bass? Yes. Okay. So you can delete that audio track. We'll get into some. Let's. We gotta bring your ARP in. <laughs> we do, don't we? We um, will. Uh, but let's uh, let's stick with uh, with MIDI for now. Mm -hmm. Let's add an, a new track. You can click there. Yeah. And it's saying, okay, what instrument do you want to load onto this instrument track? Um, for bass. Let's go with something like poly synth. Um, so well, I've gone to Bitwig because I presume it's a Bitwig thing. It is. And yep. then scroll to the bottom. Uh, poly synth. Poly synth. It's already loaded. Ah, lovely. <laughs> Let's go from left to right. First thing it has is uh, some modulators. Mm. Now, if we click on the little circle with the arrow on it in the very bottom left-hand corner. Oh, the very bottom left, this one. Yeah. Yes. Uh, those are your modulators. Click on that empty modulator slot. Yeah. This one here? Yeah, and click on the plus button. Yep. Uh -huh. And you'll see all of the modulators, all 37 of them. This is one of the big things that really drew me. It's a bit big. Uh, all these variety, <laughs> the variety of modulators here. Um, maybe when we when we dial in a bass sound, maybe we want to modulate the filter a little bit with an LFO. Mm. We'll try something like that. Uh, go ahead and load up an LFO, and we'll save that for later. You can press OK. Look, I can also make it a favorite. Uh -huh. um, OK. So now there's a little LFO in this slot. Right, and we'll we'll get to that in a bit. Let's um let's dial in a. Uh, a bass sound here we could start from a preset or ah. <laughs> perfect we're not going to reinvent the wheel but that's no 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 yeah we then record some midi or yeah so let's uh let's use your keyboard here mm -hmm. uh if you're comfortable with that um we can we can press the circle which is a record button and it'll it'll start recording um or you can quantize the notes as you put them in. Do we have like an arpeggiator or something we can... Yeah, apply? let's go for yeah. an arpeggiator. So um, I want to show you one of the quirky kind of bitwig things. You see on the right-hand side uh, where it says note and effects? Oh, yes, here. There Just you down go. here. Yeah. Click on note. Yeah. And you'll see a little blue plus button. Click on that. And it brought up all the different note effects. And there are many uh, as of uh, version 4.1, I believe. Uh, mm. There's many, many different note effects here. Um, and I would start with that arpeggiator at, at the top. It's alphabetical yeah. order. Uh, very cool. One of my favorite arpeggiators out there. There you go. Now that, that line in the middle, um, 
of all those. Yep. Here you can transpose the the note by a certain interval. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> Let's hear it with the drums. Press play. I love it. Perfect. Now let's let's play around with that LFO, that uh that modulator. Okay, so we go back and here it is. And click on that little blue flashing arrow. Light arrow wants there to go is. somewhere, doesn't it? Yeah. Everywhere that just lit up kind of blue, that bluish tint. Uh, can be modulated now. Mm, okay. So, obvious place to go with something like a filter, but I would experiment. Yeah. I would have been thinking more like, you know, make it a square wave. Yeah. Can we change the waveform here? Or is that fixed? Yeah, the shape sort? right there. Shape. Oh, well, let's just modulate that. Yeah. Um, so, click and drag the amount, surely. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you can see that it's bipolar. So... Uh, well, I oh, just, oh. just yeah. <laughs> uh. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Now, if you I wanted don't... more um, modulators, there's every time you fill up the first three, another <laughs> uh, column of three. Oh, I see modulators it there. Pop up. Taunting yep. me to modulate more. You could go Sir, what on else? and on. And there's so many, like, operators here or whatever the correct Modulators, term. yeah. Modulators, sorry. And are there kind of, is there a stepped, like, a sequence or one? <laughs> there's one called Steps right there. Steps. My favorite band. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just for the record, not my most favorite band. Not your most favorite. Okay. They're up there, you know, hey. <laughs> one more extra party. So, um, Steps, this is Steps is one of my favorites. I, I, I yeah. use this one a lot. And um, this is delightful, isn't it? Just try it. I would. I, I also like, immediately reducing the step count to five. Yeah, of course. And then going, let's then modulate that with the mm -hmm. filter, I think is fair game. So I click the little flashy doodad, I apply it positively. And then, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, nice. So you can hear it's like higher up there. Perfect. Absolutely wicked. Now you have you have uh, a, a smooth kind of LFO. You have something stepped, maybe something random. Mm, I like that nice. combination of those three. Smooth, so stepped, and random. Yep. Here we go. Look at it, little, little, little chance. Oh, you're gonna love the interface as soon as it as soon as it starts. So, what do I do? What, oh, what should I, that's I mean, that's the question, isn't it? I mean, you it could, really is. Um, you could modulate something in the synth. You could modulate any effect that's uh, that's in this. You could even modulate other <sighs> modulators. You can modulate <laughs> modulators. You can also modulate like the arpeggiator. Uh, there you go. Go oh, for my it. Goodness, um, is that going to make it go out of tune, or is it? Do you know? That you can modulate steps on and off. Oh my Perfect. goodness. What? Oh gosh. How do, oh look at it. Oh. <laughs> is this is this actually turning the steps on and off? Or is, yeah, it is yeah, as well. Is, look, you is, can see yep. them getting Wow. It's scary, isn't it? I mean it. I'm enjoying it, yeah. though. I, should, I shouldn't say it's scary in a sense. It's just that thing of like, oh, my goodness, what can't I do? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you're going to get to that point when, you know, now the possibilities are really endless. Um, yeah. Uh, I, 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 might, I, might, uh, I might limit myself a little bit by just using a certain number of modulators. Say I can only use three. Yeah. Um, and they can modulate each other. Fine. Uh, but yeah, when you have this many, <laughs> this much power. What's, what's good here in, and wh how I see this immediately being useful is that idea that you're 
um, from a relatively few set of scenes, each scene can have a lot more kind of vitality and interest. Like it's that idea that you, you know, by adding subtle modulation or extreme modulation, you're keeping a loop alive in a way that would take a lot of intricate programming to do yeah. any other way. You know, it's almost like what you what you may end up doing when you have a linear arrangement and you bake in loads of automation. You know, you can just set this up and have fun doing so. And then mm -hmm. when you sit back, you're like, that can just play and play and play in a way that is quite unique. Right. Um, and and Bitwig speak, that would be uh, anti-loop. Anti-loop, yeah, anti -loop, exactly. Which a is the name of one of the packages. Yeah. yeah, a loop that isn't a loop mm -hmm. because it's got all this kind of right. smartness to it. Right, when you when you start applying some of the, um, the chants to different notes, right, and you have that same thing looping over and over, it's not going to be the same thing every time. Yeah. When you apply all this random um, randomness from the modulators, um, it's not going to be the same thing every time. So it's yeah. a loop, but it's an anti-loop. <laughs> it's an anti-loop. I also really, really, really like the idea of having melodic information where you have chants on the notes as well. I think we should go there next. Yeah, let's try that. So, You want to dive into the grid? Yeah, I let's make so. a Let's it's make a time. pad part. And let's let's save let's save your your ARP uh, twenty six hundred for something melodic maybe. Um, so yeah, let's create another track. Yeah, and we're searching for poly grid. Poly grid. Oh, it was there. Poly with a space grid. Poly with a space grid. Okay. So. Okay. Now, um, I'll, I'll just put this out there. I tried Max MSP. Uh, uh, there's there's this continuum kind of spectrum of like, all right, I'm a musician, but I also like to nerd out. Uh, and I'm somewhere in the middle, but I'm more on the musician side. So things like Max MSP kind of scared me, uh, and I couldn't figure everything out. Uh, I tried diving into everything and kind of piecing different instruments together. But when I saw the grid, uh, it just made more sense to me because you'll see the flow from left to right, which mm -hmm. makes sense with all the other kind of... Um, device panels in Bitwig. Mm. But let's let's dive in. Let's uh, let's build something. So Bit by Bitwig's polygrid lets us build tools. We're going to be we're going to build an build instrument it. from modules. Okay. So let's dive in. Uh -huh. Very good. So you, yeah, you click there and now we're in the grid. Some some things are already set up for you. So you have an oscillator uh, set up as a triangle wave. We can change that. Um, let's let's wait for just one sec. Next to that is an envelope, an, an attack release envelope. And then the next module over there is uh, an audio output. So we can hear something. Okay. Let's first make that a, a sine wave. Let's work with some sine waves. So I'll right click on it. Yeah. And we can change this. We can replace it with a sine wave. Because if we're going more FM, we might want to stick with sine waves at first. Um, but let's add another one. <laughs> Aha. So, so on the on the top left, we see different categories of modules, and um, it's pretty intuitive. You just drag it in, lots and, of uh, and drop it. I'm quite excited about the idea of samplers. I mean, we're not going to do that now, but like we blend, making sense where you blend samples, and you know, that's just delightful. Let's see where it takes us. We can yeah, build yeah. something FM -y, <laughs> FM ish, but then okay. also add a sampler sound in there as well. So I've got uh, a new sine wave here. So. Um, Let's build, I don't remember the, the number on like the DX7, um, which, uh, which algorithm it is, where it's one uh, operator modulating two other operators, kind of like that Y split. Mm -hmm. Let's build something like that. So we're going to need okay. one more there. Perfect. And uh, we're going to need a mixer because we want to be able to hear both of those sine waves, mm -hmm. the, the, the A, we'll call it A and B. So go back up to the categories where you see mix. Yeah. And we just need a standard mixer. This and, little fella. Yep. Now before you drop it anywhere, <laughs> hold on to it. Uh, and I okay. want you to I want you to drop it right in between kind of the over the outlet of that bottom sign oscillator. Oh. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, there. There's that should be fine. Try try there. Now it it in, it inserted itself between those two modules. Yeah, that's really nice. Instead of trying to uncable everything, it shifts everything put it out of the there. way. It's like right. it's like a simple drag, and it just gets in the way. Yeah. Would okay. would the real modular be so simple to oh, use? Oh yeah. 
which is fun. Yeah, it is fun. I don't get me wrong. <laughs> but so let's yeah. take this top um, sign sign operator or oscillator yeah. and drag it into the mixer on the bottom. Boom. Yeah. There you go. Good. And then the bottom one. So then this bottom one we drag up and there's actually uh-huh. like a little empty slot here. Yeah. Out. I and guess. I believe you can have up to eight. It's yeah. four or eight. I can't remember which right now. But um, it's it's enough. <laughs> for our purposes, for sure. <laughs> okay, okay, so right now, if you play something, you're just going to hear two sine waves, which is and fine. the exact same pitch, of course. Well, the exact same thing. So really, yeah. it's, we're just made it twice as loud. Yeah. See on the left-hand side of all three of these uh, sine um, oscillators, there's the gate in. Is that this top yellow one? That's the gate. Yeah. Um, the next one is going to be your phase offset. Yeah. All right. And then the next one is going to everything related to pitch. So things yeah. are kind of um, color coded in the grid. Yellow has to do with gate information um, and like logic uh, modules as well. Then uh, purple is phase. Orange is kind of reserved for pitch. Yeah. So take the output, the audio output of that sign and drag it into the purple phase offset or phase modulation offset okay. of, of both of, of both. them. So t- there yeah. you go. Yeah. Now we can kind of create, um, we can have this, this modular or this, uh, oscillator on the left modulate both of them in different ways. Okay. So, uh, let's see what that sounds like. There you go. It's phase. That's yeah. the whole thing about like a DX synths are actually phase. It's actually a form of phase modulation. Right. This is not this frequency. Is, this is closer to that. Yeah. Um, but there's there's two more knobs that we can play with the skew and the fold. So yeah. maybe separate them a little bit so they don't sound exactly the same. Um, so skew is a, I see it skew. skew in the waveform. Yep. Oh yes. There you go. Oof. Nice. And then would it be possible to modulate that over time? Great question. Let's uh, let's go back to the um, the categories at the top left and go to LFO. Yeah. And you can insert an LFO module here. You could also use any of the modulators of this device, um, as we did with the bass sound. You can use those to modulate any of the parameters within the grid. Do you mean the ones down here? These yes. Are, yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. I mean, what about a um, ADSR? Like using an ADSR in here would be a sort of trad. Sure. Let's um, let's go to the envelope category. Um, yes. Right there, and you can drag in your ADSR. And remember, remember how we um, took one of the modulators and had that modulate maybe the filter or mm. uh, other things. That blue arrow is there again, um, where you can click on that. Yes. Do we then, what we then have to, I see. Yes, we go. do it that way. Now you, you already have the... Uh, we have it applied fully, so we have to turn it down. Turn it down. There you go. So it's an interesting thematic thing here where there's like certain things have wires and certain things have like invisible wires. And mm. I guess that's a cleanliness choice because it will become it becomes spaghetti junction it does become spaghetti junction i like both uh, approaches i like because uh, i you know from watching people like you got into modular and with uh, with real hardware yeah but um but being able to click that one arrow and then go to many different things very quickly and modulate all of them at once uh but if you ever want to see like everything going on you can look in the inspector and see what uh yeah right there so there's there the adsr yeah modulating the phase mod of that uh sine wave yeah something cool you could do in the mixer is pan them differently oh yes is this pan or is that- mm-hmm. So if this is if this is your pad sound, maybe you want it to be a chord. We would want it to be polyphonic. Mm-hmm. So click on the device header of Polygrid down in the device 
this sort of there thing. Yeah. And see voices. Yes, I do. Uh, but let's bump that up from mono to maybe four. Mm. Now it's going to get a little louder, so um, you can turn you can turn down the output on the uh, device itself at the bottom. This thing here, or you know, you can go to the mixer. Um, there's also a level category, so maybe you want some um, some reverb on something like this. Do you know, that's exactly what I do. Want. <laughs> I do want some reverb. Yes. So uh, let's go to the device panel at the bottom and see note effects Escape. and effects. Escape. Very good. Yeah, thank you. I'm learning. Uh, do you want to go here to add? I personally, I like adding effects um, within. Uh, so that this is a, an, an odd thing when I first got to Bitwig that kind of confused me. That the it could be a series of them, just the one de, one device after the next one, or you can um, insert them within within the grid. Yeah. And the reason I've I've gravitated more toward putting them within, if I really like what I built, I want to save it as a preset. Um, and if it's already uh, within, you know, if we add a reverb within Polygrid right mm -hmm. now and save it as a preset, it's going to include Polygrid and reverb, the reverb within. Because honestly, so like to save it I know for a fact what we're going to create, the reverb will be an integral part of the sound. Right. Like, yeah, it makes total sense. So click on effects, where it says note effects and effects. Yes, indeed. When we were building the bass patch, um, we used the note effects. That's where we the did. arpeggiator yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to go to effects this time, and we're going to add a reverb. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, now, um, you're going to hear the re reverb. Reverb. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely don't know how it's pronounced, actually. Uh, reverb. Well, I say reverb. I like them both. Yeah. So... Um, when I first got to this reverb, I was, I'll say it, I was a little disappointed. It was a little too plain for me until I got into um, the tank effects and the wet effects. That's where the magic happens. That's yeah. where we're going to build something. This is that whole like, extensibility thing yes. again. Yeah, yeah. Right. So um, let's just hear it. Just, uh, just standard. Sounds nice. I'll turn it down. It is clipping getting, a bit. Yeah, yeah, we're clipping a little That's bit. That's okay. Inside. Anyway, but like, we can make it sound. Better, I almost, right? I almost don't want to change it. <laughs> no, I know. Well, <laughs> that sounds good. We but let's get let's do that. something. Let's go into the tank effects. Yeah. So, um, I'm not going to get too much into how reverbs are built. You probably already know a bit. Um, I used to work for. Very popular effects company, um, very famous one. Uh, so I, I've I've seen how these are built. <laughs> I'm not an engineer myself, but I've seen how well, they're built. I think they seem complicated to me. Like they're, they're like complicated. Spiders webs. I encourage everyone watching this to go search on YouTube. There are some excellent uh, YouTubers um, that focus on Bitwig uh, that have built their own reverbs. Um, go check those out. But we're gonna build a simple one here. Click on the um, the plus button that's closest to. Yep. So we're adding it inside of the tank. I want you to search for pitch. Yep. Pitch. Pitch shifter. Pitch so shift. we're gonna we're gonna build like a shimmer reverb. Sounds good. Okay. So um, you can go ahead and press OK. Okay. okay. And what this is gonna do is uh, it's gonna take the incoming audio and. Um, shift the pitch up by an octave. So we're going to go one octave up. So that big knob in the middle, bring that all the way up, all oh, yeah. the way up, I see, 12 yeah. semitones. Yeah. Um, the mix does not have to be 100%, but uh, we'll play with that. Yeah. Right? I hear the reverb running away. Oh, the feedback running away. Yeah. yeah. Matt also want to put something called the, the tool, tool device after this. Is that another plus here? That's another plus. Yep. So and what does search the for tool. Tool is a very it's very utilitarian. Um, it just has volume, gain, pan, and width. Um, I have this on pretty much every track somewhere on it. Here, you might want to turn the volume down a bit, just so uh, when it's feeding back, we're in the feedback loop of this reverb. Um, it's not so prominent. Oh, we could that... also f filter this a bit if you wanted to add a filter. Um, can we add like a chorus to it? Oh yeah. 
So you just literally go chorus, and then this is all part of the... And kind of see within the tank effects that it's like building up a visual representation yeah. of that there, is, there are modules within mm -hmm. the module. That's right. <laughs> and this is just... This is why I see, and it's like it's got little, like, yellow brace, and it's... It yeah. actually it makes sense visually. I see what it this is. This is one of those things that really drew me to Bitwig because I would get very used to the devices in another DAW, but I was like... I, I know what I want now. I know that I want to build this specific thing. I don't see a, a plugin for it out there. Mm. Um, I'll build it myself. Dang it's it. really easy as well. <laughs> it's like, if you, I want a reverb that has shimmery, chorusy, you know, tails. Okay. Volume down. <laughs> Volume down for those. Well, that's the thing. We're playing with feedback now, so you got to... Gotta you be gotta careful. Ride, ride the ride the like, beast. <laughs> so let's go to the wet effects now. Um, we might want to go and add a filter in there or some kind of EQ. Actually, let's load up uh, EQ plus. Just type in EQ. EQ plus. And there's EQ plus there. Um, really, really great EQ. If you go to the bottom left hand corner of the device, yeah. Just like you went into the grid, uh, there's this. Um, Do you mean this little thing? The pop up panel. One more above that. This thing. That one. Oh, yeah. Big, big display. So anytime you see that on a Bitwig device, try it. It's going to yeah. pop up and you'll get a, get a different thing. Yeah. So maybe maybe we take away some of the lows and some of the highs, kind of that um, Abbey Road reverb. Oh, yeah, trick. yeah, like really bandpass it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like automatically going to option well, to yeah. adjust the um, width. Uh-huh. Can I just click it? Yes, I can. Create yes, a new... Um, I'm looking what frequency I'm at. It says up in the top. And I'll tell you what note, what pitch that is. Oh, that is delightful. Yeah, mm -hmm. D7. Then if you look down at the device at the bottom, you can um, change. If you don't want a, uh, a bell, um, if you want it to be a low pass or a high pass. Just like, yeah, 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 that makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? And what I like about this one, you can see that it's one pole all the way up to, I believe, eight pole. It is. Yeah. Yep. You get a real, like, super steep. Yeah. Um, it says it here as well. It's giving you loads of info. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, a good program will tell you in different places yeah. <laughs> what can, something is. Yeah, exactly. It just like fits different. Mm -hmm. so that, that's now constrained the frequency range of everything that's in the tank effects as well. So it's like it's, it's narrowed everything down for us. So it's post reverb. Yeah. Okay. But it's still it's still part of if you turn the uh, the mix up and down the the dry wet on the bottom this one. it's part of that so if you turn it all the way down you're not going to get that EQ is not going to be applied to the incoming signal it's no, only it's applied just to, the, to the wet component of the sound. yeah mm -hmm. all right so um, you've built you built your own uh, FM type synth yeah. with your own custom reverb let's put down a part. Let's, uh... So, I recorded that. So, right now, that loop is nine measures long. Maybe you want it eight. I would I would trim that a bit. Just mm -hmm. drag the loop bracket. There you go. Yep. We can see here. I'm also seeing here. There's the length. Or yeah, quite helpful and, to see an inspector. That and the, the inspector is a neat eight. Yeah. Um, now, just if I know in electro, um, it's not always tonal. It doesn't have, always have to be in a certain key. Mm -hmm. If you did um, want to be in a certain key, there are note effects for that. Oh uh, yeah. How does that? How does that work? So let's go back to um, the Polygrid device. We're going to go to note effects this time. Aha, uh -huh. yes, here. Same place where the arpeggiator was. Okay. And we're looking for one called Key Filter. Key Filter. Uh huh. So here you can select what key you want, uh, yes. what mode you want. Yep. Um, I'm not sure what our like, noodly oh, acid yeah. thing was in, but can we constrain them both to the... 
what you could do is decide on something for your pad part here and then just copy and paste this over oh, on that's the... that's delightful. Um, maybe uh, A-sharp fridging. Great. So, and then if I play this, well, that will then quantize. And this happens on a per sort of... It's not on a per track basis. It's on a per part or per instrument basis you can strain the... The note, the key filter is built within now polygrid which is on this track so yeah. it's all part of the track okay and then the, how do i copy it to our noodly acid sequence uh just click on it once and command c to copy uh yeah and then go over to polysynth yeah and i would put it um after the arpeggiator yeah so just uh click on the arpeggiator and hit command v there she is and it'll put it after yeah <laughs> Oh, yeah. Right. All right. It's a good start. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you're going from one DAW to another, you're going to be used to all of your go tos in that, in that DAW. And you, you might get a little discouraged when you're like, I can't do that exact thing <laughs> that I did right over now. there. Yeah. Try try and work through it. Um, just try and get something down and uh, and just move on. So let's do that. Let's uh, let's try incorporating your ARP. Yeah. So how do we create audio tracks? And um, same way. Uh, actually, I'll, you can click the bu plus button over there. That would actually um, go toward uh, an instrument track. You could right click and say add audio track. Another way to do it, well, there's the keyboard shortcut, Command Shift T or Control Shift T on PC. Yep. Uh, also just want to point out that this is available for Linux, any Linux mm. users out there. Yeah. Um, if you go to the add at the top, on the top um, bar yeah. of the transport, you can add um, uh, tracks there as well. And do you see the little push pin? I so do, yeah. You can just always have it there oh, for nice. for everything that you always yeah. use. You can just go like ping and then ping. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And and as you're using um, Bitwig more and more, um, let's say you click on a clip. Click on any one of those clips now. These ones. Uh huh. Yeah. And you see the at the far right where it's turned to clip. Uh yes here. So it depends on what what has the focus. So right now the clip has the focus. So here are all of your um clip options for editing yeah. so you could reverse the clip scale it yeah interesting yeah yeah okay and cool. then pin them if you always use them so yeah yeah double content uh, is one that i was kind of you know i mean it, it goes from the tr you can have this at the track level clip level Look. note level yeah that's really nice the double content is useful for like just double it and then yeah. create shift this note create a variation right, um, right. i mean that should I don't know if it'll be good, but we'll try it. Anyway, so recording audio, yeah. <laughs> let's uh, let's arm this track for recording at the at the bottom of the mixer. Yeah. All right. Now it's it's coming in on the right only, so you just want to select that. Yeah. It's very clear which one I should be picking since mm -hmm. uh, it says. Nice. Yeah. Now are we are we also sending? I don't know which. Uh, if it has MIDI on your device, if it's, it does um, have this, this device does have M1D1, um, ah, but it's okay. using my key step. So I don't know if that will okay. mess things up or, um, oh, there you go. Let's try this. Let's, uh, hit tab. Yeah. Let's work in the arranger right now. Cause I want to show you something called comping. Yeah. Um, which, uh, you know, it's available in many different DAWs. What I want to show you is, uh, I just want you to jam on the the ARP 2600 for a bit, and uh, we're gonna comp together a little performance that should do. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Now, what we a couple of things to set up. In the top, uh, in the transport, we need to turn on looping. So uh, we have the BPM, then we have uh, the playhead position. Keep going to the right, you're gonna see a little loop that thing. right there. Yep. Bing. Yeah. And now the loop um, bracket or brace in the uh, arranger will be active. Uh, so how many measures do we want that to be? Uh, maybe two? 
Let's uh, let's scroll out a little bit. Just a uh, little magnifying glass. Yeah, and, okay, I it's see. already it's okay. already two. Yeah, perfect. So what's going to happen when you record here? Um, hitting the global record button is it's going to create a clip, and you're just going to play, and it's going to keep looping around. And every time it loops around, it's going to create a new take. I say, yep, 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 okay. yep. When you're doing this, you might. You, oh, I messed up on the first take. Don't worry about it. <laughs> mm. You just keep going. That's the way to work with uh, with with takes. So I would just I would just jam for a bit and see what happens. So you will need to hit yeah, uh, so, the global so record button. Hit, uh, this little thing, that button. one, yeah. So. Bing. <laughs> That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. <laughs> um, so then, how yeah. do I extract my takes? So double click on it, and oh, we nice. see yeah. the um, the editor at the bottom. So you can see take one is all the way at the bottom, and then take ten. There were ten takes for you. Yeah, is at the top. Um, take maybe I, don't I think know. it was like eight or nine Dude, in there. Yeah, somewhere just... in there. This. So double click uh, within the um, the takes themselves. If you double click, it'll select the whole thing. I see. There you go. Not that one. Not that one. Interesting, yeah. That's basically what I want. Okay. That's really nice, isn't it? You just like go through me. That was the one. So... I'm yeah. So maybe that's that's the one, but maybe that, and I think I think this take actually does sound good. Uh, maybe that last little note at the end, um, maybe it was a little earlier, a little late, mm -hmm. and you want part of it from another take. Mm -hmm. If you go down to maybe take uh, seven there, yeah, and just uh, you got to click and drag the portion that you want. So I just like. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, that's nice. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I see. So you simply click and drag, and that determines you just take chunks from each take. Yeah. So nice. That's really nice. I, I just, mean, yeah. this this has a very clear use, especially if you're a vocalist or a guitarist or whatever. Uh, this is very very handy, but you know. As uh, as music producers in DAWs, we're giving a lot of tools that we might not know what their <laughs> original purpose was. We got to find creative uses for them. Mm. Um, and if you just record your jam for a while, you can um, you can go to town editing it together. An interesting option with all of this, if you record maybe you know an hour long modular jam, mm. there's a there's something called fold to take, where you could right click on uh, on any audio clip. And uh, let's say it's um, let's say you did record it to a click and it's 32 measures, but you want it to be four and slice it and have all of those be separate takes. It'll do that. So it's uh, so it'll 30... fold it into fours. Yeah, yeah. and then so you it'll be eight takes four measures long. I see exactly what that is. Yeah, yeah, something that, to experiment with. That's a delight because especially with modular, you end up recording massive long takes, and yeah. otherwise you have to like <laughs> navigate the long arrangement and move stuff over. But it's it's literally right. folding the takes back until you've got a big long cake or a tall right. cake that has all of your takes. Mm -hmm. And then you can just click and drag them out. Yeah, that makes That's total right. sense. Really nice. Okay. All right. So you have, you've recorded something. You've done a little take editing. In the, um, I just want to show you Bitwig's uh, audio, audio editor, which I think is one of the most powerful ones out there. Um, click on audio events right above where it says comping. Yep. Um, it'll still show you what's there, but now you could say, "Okay, um, I want to, I want to take that last little bit at the end and bring it up an octave." Okay. All right. That would be a little difficult in in other audio editors out there. This we're looking at events now. So uh, inside of the clip, we have events, and not not just uh, notes or anything. Uh, these are called events. Click on that last greenish, yellowish greenish um, event. Click on here or on yep. the. Uh, the header of it. Yeah. There you go. And then look at the inspector toward the bottom. 
Expressions. Yeah. Expressions. And you could you could bring it up an octave or down an octave for uh-huh. maybe a fifth, whatever you want. Notice that the color went away because you've changed what was in the take. Yeah. Uh, um, so if you press play. Yeah. It's and like, you can edit it to whatever you want. Okay. Um, each yeah. event could be its own... Um, like stretching algorithm. So uh, at the toward the top of the uh, audio events inspector, you see mode, and then it's set to stretch right now. Um, yep. There are some different um, algorithms there. Yeah. And each event can be a different one. <laughs> okay. That's crazy. Uh, also, all of the operator stuff that we played around with before with the drums, this will... those apply to audio oh, events. What? That's crackers. <laughs> Change the mode. Oh, yeah. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, like the different modes all have such a distinct sound. Uh, right, and you, you'd want them to. You don't yeah, want them yeah, to all. <laughs> yeah, they definitely. That's bonkers. Look at all this stuff. Um, um, okay, wow. This is like, yeah, it's just like a whole world of stuff to explore. And then can you, how would, can you sort of slice this in order to? Yes. So let's go to, um, instead of, so we have audio events, comping. Let's go to stretch. Yeah. All right. So now you see the little blue um, kind of flag there. If you if you go to the bottom of the waveform, all the way to the bottom, yeah, uh, you can actually start adding in little places to to chop it and stretch it. Double click. Uh, double click. You could also hit Command E. That'll slice it. Yeah. So you could go. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. 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 So then, this is gonna. Like- you could also you could also do this in audio events. The the slicing part of it. Yeah. Here you could slice it and stretch them around. I mean, this is just like starting to get like Inception, isn't it? It's just like in a delightful way. I should be very clear. It's like yeah. I mean, it's so <laughs> okay, and it's a good time to mention that uh, it's a non-destructive <laughs> editing program. So if you hit undo, I literally uh, controls all- editing. Oh, oh, there you go. Right. Well, option zedding, alt right. zedding. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. So yeah, um, yeah. Wow. I just think it's it's other DAWs. They, they don't even have real audio editors built in. You have to use a third party. Um, and it this has one built in, and it's very very powerful. Yeah. Uh, just a, something that definitely drew me toward Bitwig. Yeah, wicked. Um, so let's hear how it sounds with the pad part. So. <laughs> I mean, it's sort of nice. weird. It's weird, but I like it. I mean. It reminds me of uh, some pilot red. What's that guy's name? Pilot Red Sky. Oh, Never I mind. I should listen to that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a new one. Um, this stuff. Huh? Yeah. So, so yeah, you have uh, some things going. You have uh, some drums, some bass, some pad, oh, yeah. some uh, some extra filler. Anything else that you'd want to add to it? I think that's fine for now, for the purposes okay. of this experiment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's let's bring these uh, these clips that are in the launcher over to the arranger, create a very quick arrangement, mm. and so, then let's export it. Yeah. So then how just, do I- just just so you've gone through the motions and you could say, okay, I've done it once. Yeah. I could do it again. Yeah. Um, so right now the uh, let's see, let's delete everything. Um, except for the audio, the audio that, that we recorded. recorded. So we've got a kind of clean arrangement here. Yeah. Right. Um, you. I just want to show you that you can click and drag a clip over from the launcher to the arranger. Yeah. I All right. I can. Yeah. Okay. You can slice them if you wanted to. You could rearrange them wherever they go. One f- interesting thing I want to show you about Bitwig is there's something called a hybrid track. 
So most DAWs, you have uh, an instrument or MIDI track, and then you have an audio track. Bitwig, you can have both on one track. Now, there are different reasons uh, why you'd want to try that. Um, but what I want to show you is you can hold down Option on your keyboard. Yep. And drag in this blue clip on the pad track over to the arranger, and it's going to uh, bounce it uh, there. Goodness. Yeah. All right. If you wanted to go ahead and you know chop this up in the arranger, um, if you wanted to create a variation there uh, and and see it across the timeline, it's there for you. Um, but now, if you look at the uh, the track names, where it says like 808 master, poly synth, mm. poly grid. Um, look. look at that icon. That's a little audio waveform and a keyboard. Yeah, it's both. It's a hybrid track. Just very quickly, what is the benefit yeah. of a hybrid track? Why would I? Is that so that I could work with audio but still retain like the MIDI? Is that the idea? One thing I always do on a track is I just, for a split second, I might want one effect. Yeah. Maybe I could automate it, but maybe I, I like it to be baked in and just commit to it. Let me show you some bouncing uh, things that you could do. So this is this is going to be a little... It's, it's right between the launcher and the arranger. There's this row of, uh, of, of stacked um, stacked lines right there. These Click ones. on that. Yeah. And we're switching to I just see. listening to the arranger. Because I noticed the things thing were is, grayed out before, so they were kind of... You can only have one clip at a time playing on a track, and the launcher and the arranger are pretty much the same thing. So um, so it depends on which one has the priority. So right now the arranger is in focus here. Yeah. Um, right, maybe duplicate that orange clip, so, Command D, yeah. and yeah. it'll just place it after. Right click on the second one that you just created. Yeah. And there's some bouncing options um, toward the middle. There's bounce in place, which will just uh, create it on that track. Uh, the bounced audio version on that track, or you can bounce and create a new audio track um, and have it there. Okay. Um, try bounce in place. Would so it, it created that? an audio version, and maybe maybe for a split second on that track, you just wanted to reverse the audio. Yeah. Um, come down. Oh, right. How do you do that? Do you do that? <laughs> so uh, click. Go to the top um, where it says clip. Remember yeah. those clip menus? Reverse. reverse. So then if I solo this track. Oh. Oh, and it's looped. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Now, really good. Yeah. N notice when he did that, remember we had the saturator on this track. Mm -hmm. uh, let's actually double check something. Let's go to the device view. Hit D on your keyboard. Mm -hmm. And where is that? I'll make sure we're looking at yeah. the drum we're track. Scroll, yeah. scroll all the way to the right. Yeah. And notice that the saturator is after I do. the um it's not it's not built into the drum machine yeah. right now. It's after so it applies equally to the bounce thing as the unbounce. Right. So it's yeah. it applies to the MIDI clip that you have there and to the audio mm -hmm. clip. So the audio clip will skip all of the instrument stuff and go straight to the audio effects. Can I just check, is it then possible for me to put effects only on this clip? Uh, if you bounce it to a new audio track, um, it'll ask you if you want to have it post effects. Try it. Try um, that first MIDI clip again. Bounce in place. Or I'm sorry, bounce. Yeah. And do you want it pre effects, pre fader? So you could, yeah, you can apply, you can bake in as much as you want, basically. You can bake in the effects and then just drag that clip back. <laughs> mm. Uh, to that same track, or keep it on the new yeah. track if you wanted. Cool. I totally see why you would do that. So you've now we can destructively work with audio, mm -hmm. basically. Well, we yeah. can always undo. I mean, so it's non-destructive in that sense. You could always undo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would like I like things tidy, and if I can keep all of my drum stuff there on that one track, whether it's MIDI or audio, mm. great. You apply the same like EQs to like you know yeah. that yeah, it makes total sense. Yeah. Right. If you do bounce to a new track, um, but you wanted the same EQ applied to everything, you might turn the EQ off uh, when you do the bounce and then drag the clip back yeah. and then turn the EQ back on. So I'm sort of very quickly uh, making a, an arrangement here. Yeah. Look, here we go. Here's my extremely small vignette. Boom. <laughs> Done. 
easy. Music's easy. Uh, it's so easy. <laughs> it's so easy. That's all there was to it. Um, so what now? How do we export? So um, go to File, which is the very top left-hand corner. Yeah. I mean, if before File, you see where it says New 3 there? Um, I just want to point out that you can have multiple projects open at the same time. Yeah. Uh, if you did create some, a new project right now. We should probably have... save this, shouldn't we? Uh, oh, yeah. Cool beat. And it's saved into uh, <laughs> Cool Beat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Or My First Beat, my which, first is, which cool is always beat. the go-to. <laughs> All right, so go back to File. <laughs> yes. And uh, export audio. Yep. All right. So um, you could you have a couple options where it says time range. Yeah. Uh, you can select the arrangement, which will look at look for all of the clips that are there. Things that have data. You just go from the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then or the loop range. Maybe you're working on I don't know a sample pack or something. Yeah. And you just want that sliver of time. Loop region uh, that's helpful would be too. the only what is contained within the brace. Basically. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. So, yeah. If you click if you click loop region now, it should only be two measures. Yeah. That is. So, go back to arrangement. Yeah. We'll select everything. All right, and then some other things, uh you can export a WAV file, um FLAC, uh MP3 at the end, whatever you needed. Yeah, nice. The tracks on the left-hand side, you could say what exactly you wanted to export. I would do the um the master. Yeah. And then um, if you wanted to change the sample rate, which you probably don't need to, uh, dither is selected by default. That just adds a little bit of extra noise. Um, I'm going to make things nicer, smoother. <laughs> I think you're good to go. Yeah, so okay. go ahead and click OK. Boom. Cool beat. Look at that. Look at that. Bong. You could also do it in real time if you wanted to. Say you had a lot of randomizing uh, modulators or whatever. Um, or the operators randomize things. If you wanted to make sure that you liked that export, yeah, yeah. you could listen to it in real time. But like, oh, I don't like this. Cancel. <laughs> Go back and do it again. Okay, I like this take. Presumably be that's my... also a good like use of the bounce in place is the ability to kind of yeah. consolidate like weird effects and just like, right. like, that's what, you know, I want that take. You commit to it. Yeah. yeah. Great. So now that, that bounce should be in your folder. Unbelievable. We made music. We made music today, <laughs> and that's the point. That's always yeah, that's, that's the goal. It is. I mean that because that that bounce always sounds different when you listen to it outside of the door. Mm, kind of, <laughs> not technically because the door should, but as not in, technically it, mentally, but like it when different. you listen to it yeah, outside exactly. of the door, it sounds a certain way. Yeah. Wicked. I mean, there's so much to explore. We've obviously it is really important to say we have talked about about five percent of the possibilities oh, of this yeah. program in this oh, video. Man. So. Um, can people check out more of that from your good self about this program? Uh, yes, there are. Um, well, there's Bitwig's uh, uh, website, bitwig.com. Uh, there's their great YouTube channel. My friend Dave Lennonbank does some really, really cool modular techniques and uh, building different devices. So definitely check out their YouTube channel. Um, follow them on all you know normal social platforms. Um, but you know, one thing I do, one last thing I want to show you. Okay. Uh, if you do go, maybe go to um, the Polygrid. Yeah, uh, so we're here. Uh-huh. And click on the title of Polygrid. Yeah, this thing. Uh-huh. And then see in the inspector at the top, show help. Yeah, of course, show help. Show yes. help. Look at this. The manual is built in. And not only is it there, it's interactive. Delightful. You're actually looking at the device that is there. Um. So you can learn all about the device. Uh, there, the manual. Oh my if you go, God. what? Yeah, oh, no, I know. It really <laughs> is actually the thing. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's interactive. It is the thing. That is amazing. So it's like literally the thing. What? Like it really yeah. is the thing. That's delightful. It's amazing. That I was is really clever. I f it was uh, maybe version three that this was released, I believe. Um, but yeah. Uh, if you're first getting into Bitwig, this is very, very that helpful. That is really as it says on the tin. Incredible, like yeah, okay, I've never seen that before. Wow. Also, if you go to the preferences, yeah. the Bitwig logo at the top. Yes, the little. There you go. Uh, see help all the way on the right. Help. Some built-in, not built-in lessons, but places to go. Um, tutorials. Yeah, this right. will bring you different places on the web. Most of these will will take you to uh, Bitwig's website. 
Um, but then uh, some premium learning content below that. The fine, only the finest of learn. learning content here. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, that's great. It, it, and the documentation. Yeah. Go and learn more and really like nerd out about all these yeah. different features. But it doesn't seem like, you know, what you've explained to me here is like quite straightforward. It's just under- it's getting my head around the possibilities, I think. Yeah. And just, I mean, at this point, I would start a new project and do it again. Yeah. And then again, and you're going to get the hang of it quickly. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sign off Very and good. just make even more <laughs> strange time signature beats. Yeah, man. So, Pat. Cool beat number two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Right. The follow It's happening. Pat, thank you so very much. Um, uh, thank you. This is a lot of fun. Folks, uh, there are links down below if you would like to check out Bitwig. Pat, thank you, folks. Thank you. That was fun. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.